Hello, and welcome. Welcome. Back to a very special episode of D5, The Mighty Ducks, the show where we looked back at the entire Mighty Ducks trilogy five minutes at a time. But today, we are here one more time doing another MMX at Home special because if last year wasn't good enough, we're doing it one more time. But I am not alone. I, someone who had literally been here this entire run, every season, every special, she just comes on the show. Our super mega all star. I'm running out of adjectives. It is Tyranny <laughs> Callahan. Tyranny, welcome back to the show. If little fifth grade Tyranny could see me, a little fifth grade Tyranny dancing to Whoop There It Is in her elementary school gym, only knew that someday this this movie series would change her life that way. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, here we are. We are here to talk about the television series, which I was not planning on doing. I really was not planning on covering the TV series at all. As a matter of fact, I'm going to shout somebody out here. Dave Pallas, who is an episode, I has not aired as of recording it, but when people hear this, he's on the last one of the last episodes of the season. He went and said, do not squash the idea of doing the TV series because of Cobra Kai. Do not. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, whatever. Well, here we are. <laughs> we're doing an episode. And I said, we're part of MX at Home 2021. Hopefully next year, we're not doing a third one of these. I really do hope we're in Philly next year. So we'll find some wood to knock on. Hopefully. All listeners. The whole table. Ready to go. <laughs> anyway, so here we are. We are talking about Honey Ducks Game Changers. And before we get to this, we were actually covering the episode called Spirit of the Ducks which was directed by Stephen Brill, written by Tom Landon, and it was aired on Disney Plus on April 30th, 2021. Before we get into the description of the episode and we get into the show, what did you think of Game Changers as a series? Well, I have seen up through this episode, so I have not watched ahead. Um, I am very pleasantly surprised. I was planning to watch it anyway. Um, I really like Lauren Graham. Yes. One of the things I actually thought specifically in this episode is it's very refreshing to see her play a single mom who isn't a caricature the way she was as Lorelai and Gilmore Girls, which don't get me wrong. I watch the times. Um, sorry, did I glitch? <laughs> um, but so Gilmore Girls was like the joke was, oh, she's the flighty. She he and her daughter are like sister, you know, and this is, it's just nice to see her. Like, no, she's a single mom doing her job, running the hockey team, whatever. And um, I don't even mind the will they, won't they dynamic that they're setting up between her and Gordon Bombay. I think they're doing it pretty well. Um, whoever, t- uh, the mom skills uh, episode. Yes. That was-, was amazing. I did not know how much. I needed to see Emilio Estevez hold up a piece of pie and whisper pecan pie like across the <laughs> eye. I we were we were rooting it on. Like Mandy called it because we Mandy watched it. Okay, but say me and Mandy, my wife, watched every episode together as they were airing. We watched every episode every Friday, and mm-hmm. um, it was this this show was so much fun, and we were rooting it on. Like Mandy even called it, and we still rooted it on. Like we knew what was coming. Yes, <laughs> it was so the- awesome. That is something that on the page does not. And that was the same episode with the Coop sleepover, which I love. So uh, that was yes. a great episode. I was a little frustrated and it, it came up in this, this episode, the spirit of the ducks, because the show really wants to have it both ways. It wants to redo the Gordon Bombay hates hockey and kids dynamic. Right. And it's like, but guys, you did three movies getting past that and something happened in this episode there was a throwaway line that really bugged me <laughs> um where i was just like guys did I, 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 do people know who gordon is or not i know it, it, like it, the minnesota miracle man has just been completely forgotten conveniently <laughs> it's yeah, very it's strange almost, sometimes it's almost kind of like it's been 15 years since the third movie 15 years which is insane when you think about it 15 years <laughs> And we're picking up. And I can understand Gordon being like- It is not that long a time period. I'm sorry. The kids don't know who he is, but- Yeah. <sighs> I can see where Gordon left the Ducks. I can understand that logic. I can understand him hating the universe that the Ducks are in. 
I can understand that completely because I, I joked in the pilot to someone I was watching the show, the ducks have turned into the hawks. Oh, uh, they turn into. So, yes. <laughs> and I don't know if I like that or not, but it, it's what it is. And the ducks turn into the hawks. And the fact that Gordon is there, it's like uh, he was hidden in the back of his ice rink for no reason for the last decade and nobody knew he was there. Nobody checked on him. Nobody cared. Like, it's weird to me. <laughs> That that was the most, and I, I'm sorry, I know you're going to like do what the episode was about, but that was the one thing that really bothered me with this, where it's like, you understand how some people could, people lose touch. It happens. All the time. And he kind of didn't want to be found. So fine. But I hate, like, like in a previous episode, Stephanie, the boss, basically was like, Who's Gordon Bombay? I have no idea what you're talking about, but she's organizing the Mighty Ducks 25th anniversary gala. So like she knows who Gordon Bombay is. Like, <laughs> I agree. It, it's ridiculous. Oh, I can almost, almost, almost go with the fact that I don't know who he, who he is because I don't want to talk about him. Because we don't recognize him, but it's part of the history. But I know yes. he is, but I don't want to recognize yes. him. Like I could see that being a thing, you know. Like 100%. that's totally legit. <laughs> like, that kind of. I, I really want there to have been. Yeah. Yes, I, I want there to have been a video because no kids had their phones out recording it 15 years ago, sort of thing. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But like the idea that he and Alex work together because they both have the same attitude. <laughs> Well, let's get into this. We well before we get into the episode, what do you think of the Don't Bothers as a team name? I thought that was weird, and then I got used to it after like three episodes. I got used to it. It was weird. I don't know how to expect it. How to explain it? Uh, I I got used to it very quickly. Right, that's the Ducks coach. Yeah. Um, but the coach of the Ducks when they, when she says we're the Don't Bothers, and it's such a moment, he goes. Are you sure you want to go with that? Like, it was just such a great <laughs> delivery of that. Like, lady, you're going to regret this in the morning. Like, I, I love the way this show constantly undercuts its own big moments. It makes me laugh every time. <laughs> it's well written. Like, it's so well written. And it's like, um, did you watch the um, Stay by the Bell reimagining on Peacock? Uh, no, I, I have a... Sorry, um, what was the question? Because I do you happen to out, see so. the Stay by the Bell reimagining on Peacock. Okay, no, I totally missed the Stay by the Bell part. I'm glad I asked. No, I did not. <laughs> okay, Stay by the Bell, the Peacock thing, did the exact same thing this show did, where it made fun of itself okay. in the middle of making fun of itself. Like, I think they did a lot. They did that a lot in that series, which is why we enjoyed it so yeah. much. Because they're literally making fun of the old show while making jokes in this show about making fun of it. Like it was so like fourth wall breaking. It was amazing. Like that's what made yeah. this funny too. So. <laughs> yeah. I would have really enjoyed um, seeing Averman talking to Nick Gantz and Gordon like running over and be like, get those two away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Or something like that. <laughs> like his spiel. <laughs> That's very funny. So, all right. This episode occurs called, called Spirit of the Ducks. And the the thank you to Disney Wikipedia, Disney Wikipedia that gave me a nice short summary because the one on Wikipedia spoiled the entire thing. So I didn't want to do that. So let's do the short version. With, oh, okay. With the original ducks back in town, Evan and Bombay each consider where their loyalties lie. Straightforward to the point. And if you watch the show, you understand. You understand it. By the way, the, the kid they casted for Evan is brilliant. Like, he is brilliant, and I've never heard of him before the mm. show. Like, I feel like I've seen him forever, but he didn't really have done anything before this. So he is brilliant at this. He was really good in this episode. The whole, when uh, when he goes to his mom, is like, you always tell me what to do. <laughs> like, this is the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Ay, ay, ay. So, okay, we start off with the continuation of last episode which is pretty much evan going back to the ducks because okay i'm still trying to figure out why did he go for this meeting with the coach he's not on this team he should know something's up why did he go 
I, <laughs> like, I don't understand the point why he did this. Like, um, hmm. he, he wants, he wants. So, the, um, like you said, the coach for the Ducks is fantastic. He is so funny. He has his moment. His dry sense of humor is so ridiculous. It's <laughs> killing my husband because he's on Letter Kenny as a hockey nut, but a totally different persona, I guess. I haven't watched it, but apparently it is like killing my husband who does watch both shows. <laughs> Got it. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so he's brilliant here. So we have this whole conversation where they can say, so how do you feel about the Ducks being the bad guys in this show? The actual bad guys are the Ducks, the title of the show. Like, how do you feel about that? I actually, I don't, well, like the Ducks were built into this winning team, became the team that everyone wanted to be on. And now two decades later, they are the powerhouse or 15 years after the original one. But, you know, a couple decades later. And that makes sense. Like that does happen. I think one of the weird things is that because the show tries to have it both ways, the original ducks come back and none of them have any idea this has happened was it adam uh when they walk in he goes the ducks have become cake eaters like that was a great moment but fulton lives here um none of these people have come back i mean they in a way in a way i can okay this is coming from the small I, town I, I don't mind the ducks being everyone just woke up in 2021 <laughs> well i i can almost understand it because like i grew up in a small town and but if I, I, play, I play football and, but the thing is, even if you're living there, you're not like paying attention to the sports world in your hometown, unless you have a kid that's playing, you're not really paying attention. So you may mm. not be paying attention. You may not be knowing what's going on. You're like, Oh, look, the ducks are still succeeding. You're seeing them on the back skirt and you're saying, Oh, look, they won 10 straight championships or whatever the number was. I'm like, yay. I'm a happy, I'm still yeah. young look for them, look at them, they're playing fantastic and not knowing the inside of what's going on. That could be what it is. Okay. So that's just how I look at um, it. You know? But I do yeah. love the introductions of the Ducks because I love the fact that the first reason we meet is Fulton. Like, I love the fact that that happened. It mm -hmm. was such a cool moment because I didn't expect it. Like, I knew we were, I knew the episode was because it was promoted. Oh. This episode was okay. promoted. It was promoted like crazy by Disney. You knew what this episode was mm -hmm. coming in. You knew it's a reunion episode. They wanted people to watch this episode. Like yes. we, we prom on the D5 Instagram page, I was putting pictures up from Disney Plus promoting this episode. So like everybody knew what was going on. But I did not realize we were literally going to be three minutes in and oh crap, there's Fulton. <laughs> like, whoa, okay, cool. I'm hugging Fulton. <laughs> yeah, hugging Fulton. But I love the fact that it started with the glass breaking, just like the first time we met Fulton. Like, <laughs> I love it. Like, it's like, yep. that's great symmetry. That's awesome symmetry. <laughs> like, you knew they had to do that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so as we go through the ducks, I have their um, Wikipedia pages up just so we can see what they've been up to since the last time we okay. saw them. But before we do that, I do have Emilio Estevez up here. And a lot of people wondered, where he been? And um, honestly, he has not been doing any much acting at all since D3. Like, that's straight up the truth. He went into a directing side of things for the last, like, 15 years and directed all kinds of movies, television shows, and he, apparently he did, like, one voiceover dubbing for, like, a, a English dub for, a, like, a Japanese anime. But, like, most of the stuff he's been doing has been, mm -hmm. like, directing and writing. And even then, he hasn't done anything since 2018. Yeah. 2018 was the last time he did something before this show. So he's been out of the limelight since pretty much 1996 when it came to like being in something which is crazy when you think about it thank <laughs> as for um alden hansen who is of course fulton great to see him fantastic to see him um same thing with him though he pops up places he's like he was in she's all that he was in dumb and dumber -er. And um, the butterfly effect, 
But he what really honestly he hasn't really been starring a whole lot except for the Hunger Games. He was in the Hunger Games mocking um uh, mocking Jay part one and two. Who was the guy in Dare? That was um that's not he's actually not in here. He was not in this episode. Let me check here. Am I wrong? Oh okay. Oh no, I am wrong. I am wrong. You are right. You are. I thought he was right. the guy Hello. in Dare. You're yeah. Okay. Right. I didn't get. He's the, the avocado at law. <laughs> right. Foggy Nelson. Okay. Foggy Nelson. The problem was I was looking at movies, television. He was Daredevil, obviously. In Daredevil, he was in The Defenders. He was in Jessica Jones, Luke Cage. He was all over the place. But he is, of course, Foggy Nelson. And I should know because everyone brings it up every time they're on the show. Every single person brings it up. I forgot about it because that show's been <laughs> off on my radar for what five years. I forgot about that. Like four years now since that show's been off. Like I completely forgot See, about it. See, I worked at a law school library when it was out. And so the avocados at law thing was okay. like very dominant in my life that year. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. I just it wasn't even in my mindset because I completely forgot about that show because it's been a long time since it was on. <laughs> I forgot about it. But it, yeah. it is cool to know he was the first one here because he didn't actually I didn't expect him to be in this. I didn't know I didn't know who was in it. I just saw pictures. I didn't know who was actually in the episode. I was like, oh, people are in this. But I didn't realize that Fulton lived in Minnesota <laughs> this entire time. <laughs> so that was cool. That was a cool little thing. And what's funny is that, that he's still in touch with the other ducks that live here. Like, it's so weird that he's in touch with everybody else but Gordon. But we learned in the season that Gordon really doesn't have a cell phone or any real way to communicate with him at all. So... <laughs> Yeah, I could see, I could totally see, like, people lost track of him when he was traveling all the time in the minors, and then he just came back and never got in touch with anyone. I like, could see that. Totally. He became, he became a hermit. He, yeah, so. Makes sense. Yeah, what's funny is that um, he became a hermit, and no one had a problem in, in this show, but Luke Skywalker becomes a hermit, and everyone has a problem with it. I don't understand. Like, <laughs> I don't get it. Ay, ay, ay. But anyway. We find out this is where we actually found out about the Mighty Ducks Gala, and that Gordon um, doesn't remember getting an invitation. And I think that it's, and it's obvious that so this is one hundred percent on purpose because they do not want to remember him. Which I guess, for the sake of the, of the show, like <laughs> that's fine. I guess I'm not really sure like where to stand on this. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I mean. Well, and what's stupid is they had the out of, they didn't know his address and we see Gordon's mail situation and it's bad. So when Stephanie's like, oh, we didn't have his address, that could be legit. And then when Alex says, well, I've got his address, she could hem and haw and be like, well, he was a nice enough guy to go with dinner that one time, but do you really think he fits in with the ducks now? I don't know. You know, like it doesn't have to be this grand conspiracy theory to shun Gordon Bombay. <laughs> yeah, it's. She could be nah. snotty <laughs> and not have it have been this huge plot to not invite him. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. Is she the one saying not invite him or was it like, the other parents or the coaches or like everyone else is like, I, I don't want to deal with that. I, I don't know where he is. I don't want to deal with it. So I don't know. I don't know who actually is saying don't invite him. That's the problem. They don't explain that part like at all. No. Like <laughs> explain that little plot point. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey. But anyway, the other sub story going on in here is of course, um, uh, yeah. Have... <laughs> but yeah, but Fulton invites him out for pizza. So that's cool. That works. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll get there in a second because I, I am going through everything in here but the other sub story of this whole thing is the fact that we have the ducks trying to recruit one of the don't bothers which is our main character like uh why are we doing this in the background of this episode and even then like you said you didn't look ahead you didn't look ahead obviously you, you didn't look ahead my whole issue is it's really not addressed much at all after the beginning of the next episode. It's really no, yes. okay. It's addressed, but it's not. They move on quick because you realize we're in episode six of a 10 episode season. Like we have to get through things really fast. <laughs> and the and the last two episodes are yeah. all about like the like the big combination of the show. So like you really have to get through mm -hmm. a lot of story really, really quickly. So yeah. that's the I, problem I, here. Yeah. As as he points out, if he had just told them, you know, like 
it kind of makes sense because in Evan's defense and he makes the right decision and all that, right. it's it, one pra- it's not that big a deal. It's a big enough deal to be mad at him, but it's not a big enough deal to like shun him forever and not invite him to a gala 25 years later. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, exactly. It's, it's weird because I remember they were teenagers. They're all kids. Kids fight mm-hmm. over the dumbest things sometimes. They really do. You know, <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it personally. My my son and his best friend literally got into a screen match the other day for no real reason. She kicked him and walked out of the house and they apologized 20 minutes later. There was yeah. no reason for it at all. Like there made no sense. <laughs> so like yeah. oh my god, this is a, this is normal for kids. So I can see that being an issue. Yeah. Um well we'll just talk about that before we get back to the duck, the actual or the mm-hmm. duck we care about. Before we duck we care about. Um Evan obviously went to the practice. He did the practice. I knew something was up when he was being filmed. And then at the end of the episode, when they're showing the footage, I'm like, ah, that's why that was filmed earlier. So they can go on and he can get in trouble with his own bothers. <laughs> but I'm like, I, I understand them being mad. But yeah. uh, again, it's a practice. And he's obviously still on your team. Like, obviously. It's uh, And I think... I just wanted to like, not slap Evan, but more like hug Evan and be like, sweetie, they're playing you. Yeah, it was obvious. They're playing you so bad, but you are a hopeful child. So yeah. <laughs> there will also was a, um, it was a, I was, I was promised like a scholarship and I was promised to set another thing and to help. My no, mom. no, you definitely were not. That's never going to happen, sweetie. I know, yeah, I know. I know. I know that is the grown up perspective talking though, 100%. Yeah, it's one of those, it's like, uh, never mind. Um, so by the way, I do like the fact that he, his mom found out through like he didn't tell her that he went to the mm-hmm. it's like they assumed he's back on the team because he practiced one practice, they assume he's back on the team. Like, that was never an assumption, like, we, that was never a thing. Like, I don't understand. Uh, yeah, although I, I will say, um, it was one of the um. Minneapolis, Minnesota things I picked up on. I was very happy that when Stephanie showed up with all that swag, it was in giant Target bags. Yes, I got that. I totally got it. It was such a beautiful, like there's so many wonderful touches throughout the whole thing, not just the TV series, but like it really, the this franchise is just an ode to the Twin Cities. That's because this show was not even filmed in Minnesota. It was filmed in Canada. Like it was still the- no, they knew Target is that important to people from there. Yeah, like it's impressive <laughs> that they still does stuff like that despite it. You know, like that's cause... yeah. I I my only experience with Minnesota is being in Minneapolis for about seventy two hours, and I was there with an infant who got a fever. Like a we went to the Hennepin County Emergency Room. <laughs> wow. So I had a very different experience. Um, it also was November. I actually contacted the twins and was like, hey, I noticed you guys don't do tours, but like any chance? And they're like, no, it's November. Why are you coming here? And it was a work thing that was like, oh, well, I've got the excuse to go. Uh, but then, yeah, my kid got sick. And so I just walked the elevated walkways like for eight hours a day. <laughs> to be out of my hotel room <laughs> wow so yeah um, i had a very different experience but i i i learned about target big time <laughs> the, the only time i lost i was on a minute minnesota was the mall of america trip so i really don't have a completely different experience <laughs> i did not make it to mall of america i did not make it to the diner am i bitter a little bit but yeah. it's my kid so <laughs> <laughs> um by the way i do want to the hilariousness of the fact that they actually bought 327 pairs of matching joggers and hoodies for gift bags is the most ridiculous sentence you could possibly say on this show. And I'm saying a lot about this season. Like, I'm saying a lot. Like, wow. I could not believe that sentence. Like, what? what? Why? Why? But anyway, we are now, and we're going to jump back to our reunion, which we came here for, and is the Twin Cities Slice. Which, by the way, it's a real pizzeria that they actually put the storefront up to do the scene, which is really cool. Um, so we enter, and I love the, the, the hero shot with Gordon walking in, like, yeah, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was a really cool moment. And there's the table. So I guess explain one thing. They had a bigger reunion plan than this. They did have a bigger reunion plan, but obviously COVID affected things. 
and a lot of people could not make it into Canada and um, to do the show. And most of the people in here are based in Canada, which is why we had the people that we have instead of the entire cast, but apparently was the original plan. <laughs> yeah. Well, I read original, like originally, originally, they were going to weave people in like Averman was going to work at the school and we would too. see like we would see people throughout the season, which makes so much more sense. I mean, I, I, I get it. Minneapolis is a huge city, but like, you know, people, you would see people. <laughs> I also, I will also say that based on D2, when we heard everybody's name, everybody in this little group here is from Minneapolis, Minnesota. So really you should be able to get jobs that you're, especially if it's like, oh, I can still work at the school. I can do this, that, and then I can yeah. see it being a thing. Kenny Wu is here, but it, whatever, we'll get there. <laughs> oh, no, we, we, we are at the reunion. We have a picture on the screen here of everyone together, which I got admit, I got chills watching this for the first time. Because <laughs> I was like, we're doing this, this is happening. We're actually doing this. This entire like this little season here has led to this moment. <laughs> um, it was really cool to see everybody. We have Averman. We have, of course, Kenny Wu, which you made very clear. We have Fulton. We have Julie. And um, who am I missing here? We no, have, it's uh, Connie. Adam, not Julie. What did I say? You said Julie. Oh, sorry. I said Connie. I'm sorry. That's okay. I said Connie. Um, Connie Yi and, of course, Adam Banks. This is a fantastic group of ducks we have here. It's a really good group, actually. <laughs> a really yes. Good group. Um, the one thing, by the way, I have to say that Mandy was so happy to see that Connie and Guy got married. She yes! was so happy. <laughs> it was such a group moment. Like, well, yes. She's like, we invited you. <laughs> <laughs> of course they did. Of course yeah. they did. Um, but yeah, it works for me, especially because. They, they were together pretty much the entire like trilogy. We just never really got to talk about it because I thought we did the dated movies like this back then. You know? <laughs> That's what they did. But um, I, I would also like to shout out to um, Matt Dowdy, friend of the show, who was on the podcast at the end of season one, who actually was going to come out for season three, but he decided he didn't feel like being retrospective during the pandemic. His words, not mine. <laughs> so okay. that's why he was not on for season three, even though he originally he was planning to coming on. But good guy, great guy. He definitely he still answers my emails, which is the important part. At the end of the yes. Day. <laughs> um, great person. And I, I do have everybody up here. Matt Dowdy, as as I learned when I did the interview with him, he really has not a whole, done a whole lot since the ducks. He pops up on TV shows, he'll do an episode here, an episode there. But this is really like the like being Averman is him. Like that's what it is. Like at the end of the day, he's Averman, and that's what everyone knows him as. It's the same thing actually with Guy. He didn't that's do a whole lot. He didn't do a whole lot after the ducks. Um, I'm looking at Wikipedia. He did like two movies, and then the next credit is this. <laughs> it's really weird how it works. That's I'm doing one on American Graffiti, and we're going nuts with all these people who were like, they're amazing. What else were they in? And it's like they became a health insurance management consultant or something, you know, like just totally, you know, got this bit role and this little director was doing in Northern California. And then it, it ended up being George Lucas, but they didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You were great. <laughs> uh, of course, again, same thing with um, Vincent LaRusso from Adam Banks. Didn't do a whole lot after D3. <laughs> Didn't do a whole lot. Um, the one credit I crack up at, he's bank robber in a superhero movie in 2008. That's pretty funny. <laughs> but um, after 2010, this is his next credit. <laughs> um, and, and the last, and of course, um, uh, Mark, you know, Maggie um, Murrow, he actually, she did a lot. Actually, she pops up a lot of places. She, her oh credit is by far the biggest credit to everybody else. <laughs> I love, I love, first of all, I had such a crush on Marguerite Moreau growing up, even before I realized I had a crush on her, I had a crush on her. It happened. Um, <laughs> and um, so she had a great career. She pops up on things. But what I absolutely love is she is so into this reunion episode. Yes, she is into it. She's the Connie only is like <laughs> the most enthusiastic person this whole time. It yes, is so, yes, she is so wonderful. She's so happy She's to be back. <laughs> so heartwarming <laughs> oh my gosh yeah you're absolutely right she is like so happy to be here and again i think the whole crew is just happy to be back together like it's they don't do many reunions 
and like mm-hmm. the ducks, the, 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 the um, Anaheim ducks do occasionally do something cool, and like once in a blue moon. But like this is such a yeah. big deal because it's not just like them being back together; it's the yeah. duck being back. I remember. <laughs> um, I follow her on Instagram. It must be Instagram, and it. I hope it's her. Um, and not just like someone pretending to be her, but like she was posting pictures of like how excited she was when they were doing this. So. Yes. I probably yeah. was taking those pictures and putting them up. I probably took one picture from her. It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> so yeah, I I was so I was so thrilled that like the person who really made it, like the Mighty Ducks, is one of many credits, and so she did not phone it in. <laughs> No, it's, it's actually her first couple of credits, and then you continue on. <laughs> you mm-hmm. continue on. By the way, um, I read Keenan Thompson was asked to come back. Um, he couldn't do it because he was filming Keenan. He showed Keenan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and obviously, with the COVID situation, you couldn't like leave the country and yep. come back. But he is booked beyond next season if there is another season, from what I've read. Him and also Joshua Jackson should be on next season. From what that- I've heard. <laughs> yeah, that was my biggest thing. So um, one thing that they made me think of this reunion, but couldn't get everyone is um, I watched the Fuller House, which was the reboot of Full House. I watched it. And I watched they episode. got everyone except the Olsons. Mary Kate and Ashley were not having it. No, but they- I really liked the way they handled it. First of all, every so often they'll do a tongue in cheek. Like John Stamos will look at the camera and be like, we miss you, you know, like, you know. He did it all the time. Like, he, yeah. would, he would never let it die. <laughs> he would die. He was just like, really? You can change your mind anytime now. We'll write you in. But, but I loved, I think it was, I, it might have even been one of the series finales. I really liked the way they incorporated it where they said, okay, Michelle is a famous fashion designer in New York. Other side of the country, she's not coming home often. And there's always some excuse for why she hasn't made it to the big family, whatever it is. Okay, fine. And then there's a episode where DJ, Steph, and Kimmy, who are the three leads for those who of course. <laughs> did not watch Fuller House, um, have gone out, you know, mom's night out. We're going crazy. And they yeah. come home. They are drunk. They're like carrying their heels. I and, you know, talking about too. I remember telling that. each other to whisper, but they're really being really loud. And they say, we're going to call Michelle air quotes for those listening instead of watching this and they she, they're like oh she's not answering so they leave her a voicemail and honestly i swear like i cried it was just so well done of like this is their sister who they don't see very often but who is still a part of their lives and they miss her and it you know like it, very real life it's very real yes life. yes and it's- so i i i i thought of that when I got mad at this, (laughs) because there is a, in this reunion, there is a throwaway line about how Charlie basically is mad and hates Gordon Bombay. Yes. Which is totally unrealistic. Like, and it drives me insane because we had three movies, the arc of which was Charlie learns to trust and love again. Yeah. Especially (laughs) the third one, especially the third one. The (laughs) whole point of the third one was that Charlie turns his back on Gordon, says, you don't care about me. And Gordon says, yes, I do. And so this is BS. And then I got mad because before I read, and I totally get why Joshua Jackson couldn't do the reunion. You know? Yeah, understandable. Didn't he just have a baby too? I mean, like there is- Again though, you gotta remember COVID. If it, the reason is COVID. Yes. At the end of the day, it's COVID. Like, I have no problem with the fact that Joshua Jackson is not in this episode. What pisses me off is how they address it. Because if you want to leave the door open, why don't you have it be that Charlie is, for all intents and purposes, missing too? Yeah, that makes sense. And you, could you can have someone. Yeah. You can just give an well, explanation and move on. Oh, oh, I had a lot of fun thinking through this because of course, then I spent my entire afternoon like game planning out what they could have done. Go for it. So option one, Charlie is in the minors. He can't drop everything to come to a party in his hometown. I like He's that. He's got games. I like that. I like that. <laughs> and then you, and they even in the previously on had that line about how Gordon understands Evan's dad because he was in the minors and traveled around. So like, 
you could bring Gordon and Charlie back together and they could bond, you know, or, or Charlie could be so fixated on making it to the majors that he, or, they, God, I can't even think in hockey terms. Sorry, hey, baseball. Hey, um, <laughs> but um, they could even say, you know, like Charlie's lost the soul of the ducks because he only cares about making it to the big time and Gordon can come and give an inspirational speech or something. Yeah, exactly. There's so many things they could have done. <laughs> the other thing they could have done, and it ties into this episode specifically, everyone has lost Charlie. Charlie's mom has moved. No one was keeping track. Everyone thought like he and Gordon would still be in touch, but Gordon has, lost, you know, and so they realize now no one knows where Charlie is. And then you could have episodes where Gordon is trying to find Charlie. He what can visit like people. In the, background. in the background, you could have just had a back, a little sad story going on in the background for the rest of the season. And do you know where Charlie now? Yes, yes. Um, and then you have it turn out where he's like, oh my God, I've lost that. You know, sh she moved, he moved, I, I can't find them. And then, and then we have the checkmates and oh they God. see a picture of Charlie Conway and they start babbling excitedly in check and no one can understand them. And it turns out Charlie Conway is the star of European hockey <laughs> <laughs> who taught them to skate and gave them the heart of a duck. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I need Charlie to be like the stud of Slovakia right now. <laughs> fantastic. Oh my God. That's great. I never you thought of that. <laughs> Oh my God! Introduce children from the chat. <laughs> why? Why would you not tie in the fact that? And I got really excited because uh, so I am Slovakian. Um, we don't get a lot of attention because uh, Czech got all the good towns in the breakup, basically. <laughs> um, and so I got so excited, and like that gives these kids something to do, like a reason to be there. Right. That makes sense. I like that though. I really <laughs> like that a lot. <laughs> I want it to be that Charlie moved and is like, he's a star there, but like, who who knows? Who know, until until they come over to the NHL? Who knows who any of these people are? Exactly. Exactly. A few Russians at the Olympics every year. That's the only names you ever see. True. So he could he could be there and no one would know. <laughs> exactly. And, and you could pronounce his name differently because it's a different country. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> totally wanted to be that he like you know married kids happy the whole nine yards so yeah um so by the way i i i have a pause on my screen here you're going off on the charlie thing and we missed one important detail with connie that we have to mention minnesota state senator connie murrow that was that is a great line i was like of course connie would go over the top and be amazing like, this is straight up amazing <laughs> Oh, that made it for me. I didn't expect that. And that was awesome. <laughs> and we named Aaron, a kid seven, after him. <laughs> seven kids? Oh, you have seven kids? Like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I, I'm just using the logic on how she became senator while pregnant and having seven kids. Like, oh, hell. so um, that's another thing. So the Czechoslovakian thing came up. And also, my in law, uh, what? So she's not a senator. She is a state senator. It's a totally oh, different thing. Got it. Okay. And um, I know this because my in-law, Ben, D I don't know when this is airing, but uh, Ben Downing was state senator when I met him and he became part of the family and he is now running for governor of Massachusetts. Wow. So okay. Maybe they can still do a lot of exciting stuff with Connie, but it, 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 it is different. Yeah, <laughs> They're I, not like I, taking I away anything not, from actual Minnesota senators. Didn't know that. Did not know that. But it's still pretty cool though. It's still cool though. <laughs> Um, so anyway, this is we find out that about the gala and that yes, Gordon yes. is not going to the gala. He's not going. And that's sad. And they don't know why he's not going. Um, and he tries to. And that's him. sad. Yeah. It's like, uh, I, I do like the fact that uh, Averman calls him out for having a bigger head after coaching college hockey, <laughs> which cracked me up. Like, that is such a funny line that Averman can only get away with. Only he can get away with a line like that. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so we have this, and oh, actually, we just got to the line where Charlie actually said he he said it's not like you've been showing up for us lately. That is the line from Charlie. Ah, uh, I don't even know what the hell that means. <laughs> that well, yeah, and there, I just to get Charlie out of the episode. Like, yeah. 
apparently it's going to get into like his like Gordon and his mom had a relationship that fell apart or something like that. I don't know, but yeah, I, I thought we already dealt with that, but apparently not. <laughs> well, it was forgotten about in the second movie completely, and then kind of remember reminded us in the third movie. Like it was completely forgotten about in the second movie. <laughs> I was totally willing to give it a pass on. He went away and it wasn't the same when he came back. That happens. Right. Um, so we have, but we're, we, we're going to jump right ahead to the gala because the gala is weird and crazy and over the top. Like, what is this gala? This My prom wasn't this over the top. Like, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> Like what? How is this a gala for a hockey team? Like what is? This? <laughs> and yet there are only like ten people there at any given time. <laughs> Social distancing. No, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Funny part is this whole cast is in a bubble. That's the only reason we can do this episode the way we're doing there it. We go. <laughs> um. Although, yeah, the gala had. Definitely one of my favorite lines and possibly two of my favorite lines. Go for it. Go for it. Share them. So um, I did, I really loved favorite line, hands down. Evan comes in and he does this big speech, how he's not going to be a duck. And then he says, I'll see you at States. And he goes, I mean, probably not. <laughs> the best where it's like yeah that's exact you want to like the the children's hockey or the children's sports movie showdown is i'll see you at the world series and then i love that evan is at least self-aware enough to be like i mean probably not yeah probably not it, it's it, whatever it, 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 and then he just walks away <laughs> yeah, and, um i do also like the fact that evan's not a duck I, i'm not doing this anymore guy i'm done <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, and then I, I loved his mom being like, he made the right choice. He did the right thing. And then she, she's like, you don't care about any of this. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, <laughs> and by the way, I like the fact that Evan ran into the ducks and Evan knows who they are and he followed them. And I like the fact that they're there, I Googled you guys. <laughs> I Googled you. <laughs> yeah. But he knows who they are. And that's cool. And everyone's like, oh my God, we have fans. We still have fans. Like, <laughs> That actually reminded me of Movies by Minutes podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> that little moment really, really uh, hit close to home. <laughs> A little bit. Tiny bit. Tiny bit. Um, yeah, it, it's it's definitely one of those like, uh, hmm. <laughs> so I do like the fact that he talks to them and pretty much says, this is how it is and go find Gordon. The mm -hmm. fact that they show up and they reverse course and they're driving the limo onto the ice to find Gordon might be one of my favorite moments of the entire thing. Like <laughs> it was amazing. Like I, I should have saw it coming, but I didn't. Like I should have. <laughs> I totally saw it coming that Averman was the limo driver, but for some reason, it it still delighted me. Yes, <laughs> it works. It works really, really well. Um, so he gets they get him to come to the gala and give him his moment. But the moment that, they, it was really cool to get him to have this moment and he gives his speech and it's all good. Well, what I did not expect is the ending of this episode. This ending of this episode gave me chills and I'm watching the episode and I'm freaking out because not only are we getting the ducks on the ice and not only are they in the original D5 jerseys, the original jerseys, not the, not the ducks logo, it's the original D5 jerseys. Not only are we doing that, but I don't know if you caught this, but the music in the background is the original Mighty Ducks suite. Oh, that's what got me. Like that is the music for the Mighty Ducks playing in the background. Like, <laughs> yeah. like it was fantastic to hear. Like I literally was getting chills and I was freaking out when the music started. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the music. Aww. So it was so good. It just, again, it made me frustrated. Like none of these people have come to like watch the mighty ducks play in a state championship. No, they have jerseys. Those jerseys from when they were kids would not fit them. No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. I do want to, by the way, shout out to Mandy who 10 days before this episode aired, got me 
in original the D5 green duck jersey for my birthday nice. right before this episode aired, not even knowing that this scene was in here. Like, not having a clue. <laughs> she didn't got it because she knew I would love it. And I've been doing this show for three years. And she got it for me. And I, w- I actually just wore it last week, actually, because it was a little chilly. I had to put my jersey on. But um, it's it. a fantastic jersey. And the fact that she found it in my size is even more impressive. But, like, it was before that we knew that they were doing this scene. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have that jersey upstairs. <laughs> like, I have that jersey. <laughs> I love so, that. The- I've <laughs> never gotten over. I, I only have my only hockey jersey that I still have is from UConn, which is where I went to undergrad. I did not play hockey there, but I went to a bunch of games and it's not even like the real Jersey. It's the printed on one. It was in the co-op in the sales section and whatever. And I still wear it because they are like perfectly warm. Like I live up in New England and there are days where like, you don't need your winter coat, but throwing a hockey Jersey on over a shirt really makes a huge difference. Oh yeah. And, um, and so I, I bought it at the co-op when I was in college and, um, what would it have been? Maybe 2011, 2012. I was walking down the sidewalk in Boston and someone goes, Oh my God, like your Jersey is so cool. And I'm like, Oh, thanks. He goes, where did you get a vintage Jersey like that? And I'm like, shut up. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I am not old. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Um, I couldn't believe he was like a vintage Jersey. My goodness. I'm like, it was 2006 live in the now. Well, it's funny because I, I literally rig, I have like three, I, I have double jerseys, obviously, in my closet. Mm-hmm. But like my three main hockey jerseys are two of them were bought for me by Mandy. One of them is a double jersey with my name on it. Which nice. Is awesome. um, one of them is the duck jersey that she just got me. And then I also have a 1980 USA Olympic jersey. <gasps> nice. Upstairs. No name on it, but it's the old 1980 USA Olympic logo on it the old usa logo that's upstairs that i've had since 2002 mm. i got that then it was they were doing a big sale during the 2002 olympics and i picked it up then and i've had it ever since <laughs> so um so by the way if you go to the instagram page for the d5 you can see i had the the selfie that was taken at the end of this episode we had the picture up on the Yay. d5 page so it, it, that selfie was amazing. And I knew immediately when I was taking it, I'm like, where's that picture? Where is it? I need that picture like now. Like I need it. I need my selfie. I need my selfie. <laughs> I need it. I need it. Um, so that was really, really cool to have that moment. But also you needed to have some kind of a to be continued. So this is where we find out that they have the video online of Evan skating with the ducks, which is like, uh, okay, we needed something. I almost feel like they were forced to give us something at the end of the episode because it was too good of an ending. <laughs> like, it was too good. And we needed something to, like, spice things up for the next couple episodes. Because there was really no, like, anything negative going on. You needed something. <laughs> well, but you get Gordon coming on as assistant coach. Yes, that's cool. But, like, so, uh, like this I don't know. That's how it also could have been, like, um, one of the ducks says, you know, thanks for getting Gordon to the gal or something like that. And they're like, wait, why were you at the ducks gal? You know, like that would be a way of doing it, but no, there we- were other ways of doing it. I get, I get it. Of like the 2021 way of doing things, which is the, Oh, it was on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> it's on YouTube. Oh yeah. Sorry. It was on Instagram. Sorry. I was just reminded it was on Instagram, which is even more ridiculous yeah. than it was on Instagram. Um, By the way, though, a crystal clear quality, like, 4k video on instagram which is hysterical to me that was funny like, it's almost yeah. like they filmed it with the film cameras from this episode of the show like, oh <laughs> you don't say yeah, so that is that that is our episode and that is this show tyranny I kind of say you're amazing <laughs> i mean on the show every single time we come on this is literally <laughs> the fifth time we've done this show i am like, so good at talking about Hockey, I am not good at playing hockey. It's not that big of a deal, neither am I. I am. Thank you so much for doing this podcast. (laughs) Well, I will say right now, I promoted this at the end of the season finale when I had Mandy on on the season finale, but this is the official last episode of D5. We're done. We're done. I'm moving on to another project. Let me plug this for the MMX audience and people that were watching this part of FX at Home coming in February, officially as of now. The Entertainment Apex, a show that I launched a few years back as an interview show. I have rebranded it, and it is now an MMX show. And my first movie will be Miracle. And it'll be coming out for the Olympics. 
in February. And I know, Tierney, you said you're coming on that show. And as a matter of fact, as of this recording, every single episode has at least one person on it already as of this episode recording. Congrats! The show is booked, and I'm getting more people coming on still. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a lot of fun. So subscribe to the Entertainment Apex right now. And if you subscribe right now, you can actually get all the episodes of No Days But Today, the podcast where I talked about right. You can listen to that right now over on Entertainment Apex. So that is that. Um, let's get out of here. Tyranny, get your plugs in. Go for it. Ah, all right. Uh, I'm wearing a Dewey Weber surfboards t-shirt because uh, summer 2021, we're releasing American Graffiti, one song at a time. So almost movies by minutes, but not quite. We're, we're in the realm though. Uh, and uh, that's been just an absolute ton of fun. Uh, it's part of VCR Privileges, a series I do where every summer we talk about a air uh, quote summer movie. Uh, very different from visiting you here in hockey and Minnesota land. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you go to um, on um, why social media, oh my God, I just, they should take my phone away from me. Uh, you can follow a bunch of different shows and stuff I'm doing and links to guest spots like this one. Yes, I believe the term, by the way, you're looking for is something that was coined over at um, the MMX Hub. It is the MMX adjacent podcast. That is the word you're looking for. That is the that is the tone for shows like the VCR Privileges and the Entertainment Apex. That would be MMX adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> so, as for everybody listening, I hope you're in are having fun with the MMX at home. Like I said, hopefully next year we're in Philly hanging out. I hope so. I really do. I really want to see everybody in person next year. Maybe we'll oh. go to a hockey game. Ooh. Just well, saying. I, Just I, saying. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I can yell at the flyers in person. It'd be very exciting. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much, Tierney. This was a blast, as always. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, before I forget, also, my own thing, I've mentioned, listen to the Blake's House show every single Friday. When people are hearing this as part of NX at Home, we are getting ready for AEW All Out, which is one of the biggest shows of the year for all the wrestling. So go over there, join some wrestling talk. We always have a lot of fun over there. And like, I believe this week, if I know my, my calendar, right? If the calendar lines up, right? John Parker from Batman it should be on the show. So he's, he's like a regular on our show now. So <laughs> it's, it's awesome. All right. Let me get out of here. Thank you, Tierney. And thank you all for listening to the series finale and the special episode of The Five, The Mighty Ducks. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs>